All right, we're just waiting for everything to get set up. Then we're going to play some play some Death Shadow. We're going to play a white version today. We're going to try a little bit of spice. This is uh, a list sent to me by one of my friends who was thinking about picking the deck up. Let me fix my camera there. He's thinking about picking the deck up. And he has opted to switch some numbers around. Notably, move. Hey, Archmage, how you doing? Move to six discard spells while adding two Whisper of Emeralds. And I don't have any idea if Whispers is good or not. My inclination would say that. It's a card that <clears throat> will supercharge your good draws at making your other draws a little a little less powerful on average. So it's kind of my first inclination of the card, but I'm going to give it a whirl tonight. Then again, like you shift it over here, it's quite a bit of removal. It's got it's like nine removal spells. Which is fine. Two of them being tar fire. Which I mean, if you're gonna play the whispers plan, you need to have two tar fires. Um, I really like the threat, the threats here. Um, I've been really trying to find a, a home for this card in modern. I'm just like thoroughly impressed. Nathan, I told you go ahead like 20 minutes because apparently people, I think college students, can have lecture at literally any time of the day. Yeah, that sucks. Nathan, I told you, I'm not playing this deck without Lingering Souls in it. That is just like an absolute minimum requirement. I'll try a lot of things, but playing this deck without Lingering Souls is not one of them. But I've got your main deck here, and I think I changed just a cup, just like moved away, some, moved around some of your fair stuff, and then added one more brutality just because, like, Burn's been everywhere online without stubs. This is Scrub's got a scrub. Without stubs, the burn matchup can be can be like tippy toey. But I'm excited to play this. I'm excited to try around with like the forest again. You know, with with this mana base. You know, like I'm excited to play around with this. What I mean, I'm gonna be I know it's gonna get me at some point tonight. I'm gonna go to Crack this wooded foothills for this godless shrine and not get it. And I'm gonna like rage a little bit, but I'll just have to be weary of that because that's what I've been playing. But overall, I'm gonna give it a whirl. I like how the whispers seem to be very good against combo decks. Like we're gonna struggle against combo decks a little bit more without stub, and then the fact that like you can combo with whispers and hit lands and be able to surgical the lands out of like Tron decks seems seems pretty cool. So I am excited to give this configuration a whirl here. There's definitely some cool things and I've we'll run it through here and see what I think. Competitive modern right here. First one of the, the new league system. Look at that, Jabberwocky's already got a trophy. Twelve event tickets. I just cashed out of a bunch of event tickets on Magic Online. And immediately, one of my goals for 2018 was to be a better drafter. And yeah, no self snake up there. Been a while. It's gonna be a better drafter. And even though like I've done okay, I think I've gotten three oh ones. I've had two two I've had three two ones, two one twos, and an O two. So like not really great, but you know, pretty good for me for someone starting out. But like at that rate you just hemorrhage tickets. I would like to play first.
Yeah, my first one I three out. Yeah, I was like, that deck was nuts. I had a red white dinosaur deck that was really good, really low to the ground. Um, I think I'm gonna keep this hand. It's turn three, double shadow. If we find a thought seize, it's a death shadow on two, and if we find a street wraith, it's double death shadow on two. So, well, like, isn't that what the set is here? The set's like. You know, blockings for blockings for nerds, right? I just drafted. I think I played like fourteen lands, and not even played fourteen lands. I played fifteen or sixteen lands. We're playing against Storm. Your hand is not super against Storm. That's good. That is good. I am not a very good drafter, so I have won two a couple times. That is that is the whole of my Magic game. All right, so we'll go get. We get overgrown tomb. This deck only plays one tomb also, which I should watch out for. Yeah. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So hopefully we get to terminate something here. If we can go terminate, untap, play two death shadows, we should be in decent shape. Slide of hand, we don't get to terminate, unfortunately. Oh, let me, uh, yeah, you got it, dude. You got it. They want to stream some standard on Sunday. That's, that's the plan. Oh yeah. Well, there's what. There's the one that I guess is the one that gets it while we attack. That's it. I can't rent cards yet, which kind of sucks. Well, you gotta wait. I mean, you gotta wait for it because of how card hoarder works. All right, that's not a bad draw. Maybe should have fetched. Okay, so there's my basics. So we go down to four cards. I gotta figure out how to empty this hand for this Hazret. Uh, so I think I don't really know what's good in standard. I know that I want to play a Chupacabra deck and I want to play a Scarab God deck. So I think on Saturday, on Sunday, I'm gonna play Black Green Constrictor and I'm gonna play Blue Black Control. Just do two different leagues. All right, don't kill me, man. I'm going to leave this untapped. I'm not going to. So this is going to give me one card type away from Delirium, which is nice. I maybe. No, I don't think I would play the blue-black with Chupacabras. I think that would be like Torrential Gear Hulk, Scarab God Control. I think that my black green deck is going to play chupacabras. It's going to play chupacabras, and the chupacabras are going to get hold on. Uh, yeah, we're, we're we're probably dead here, but we're going to just crack him for eight, and then hopefully uh, next turn get in there. The legions landing. Yeah, I'm worried about those decks. I think those decks are going to be pretty good. Like. The the ascend the ascend infest kind of puts a hurting on you though. Let me put my music on here. Let's hope we don't get wrecked here. I think I'm gonna try a deck where I choop with Scarab God. Yeah, I'm most shocking. I'm for sure dead now. It didn't have a. Oh wow, no, I'm not dead. Alright, let's check this out. This is gonna make it so they have to chump one of these. 
All right, so let's do some thinking. We take the Electromancer. Then we attack. They chump with one. Terminate the other one. My opponent just has Gifts Ungiven in five mana. Or Past in Flames in five mana. So I think it's pretty obvious we take the Electromancer. Because if they hit Electromancer, then they hit like a couple rituals and they can get going here. And then they're just going to go off from a pretty low base next turn. Like, we're basically going to leave them with five mana, gifts, pasts, X. And I think that's okay. Here's a three mana effect with a one mana two. No, yeah, I mean. Yes, there is. That is right also. The three mana Gideon. So let me attack here. The Chupacabra is like. Yeah, the Trooper Cobra, I mean, when it comes to any, you know, Flame Tongue Kabu cards, that's going to happen. But what does suck about the Trooper Cobra is that it just turns, um, yeah, we're just going to get rid of this now. And then I guess I don't traverse because it doesn't matter. I don't really want another card in my hand for this Hazret. Because next turn I can traverse for a land, play Hazret. And I only have one card in my hand when I draw. Um, no, the Chupacabra is like... Like, there's going to be some feel-bads when it comes to that card. And I wish that they... I wish they I wish they made, like, Bane Slayer Angel playable. You know, like, that. that's what I... I miss, like... I'd love it if there was, like, a big... What am I doing? They board out their creatures in this matchup. They board out their cost reducers to try to blank my removal. So I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff. Keep my tar fires for delirium. Go like this. Yeah, they do, Johnny. They don't board them all out, but they shave some of them. That's why we've got some removal left in. The best way to lose this matchup is to get caught with too much removal in your hands and then have them just like and not be proactive enough. We've still got two Tar Fires, a push, and three collective brutalities and two Lilianas, so like we've got some game. But I don't want eight removal spells against this deck. And sometimes they cut them off. Tar Fire doesn't hit the ones they leave in. That yeah, if they leave in that one. Then that is that's that's also bad. So maybe <clears throat> Yeah, we're still gonna go with it. Well if you're gonna take out Tarfire, I have to take out these whispers, right? <clears throat> because like I, I want to make sure this card is on. Like, if I'm playing Whispers in my deck, I'm committing to them, right? This is, uh... This hand's okay. My opponent's got 61 cards. Like, it's kind of a deck-building restraint, isn't it? I really don't like this hand very much, but I can play Grim Flare on two, most likely, and then that can dig me an interaction. Grim Flare can also fight over the top of, like, Empty the Warren's tokens. And we do get to do like a redraw and a scry. We get to do a scry redraw and a redraw. So I'm going to keep it. Like I easily could lose this game though with this hand with a hand like this. Just very threat dense. We're going to be pretty aggressive, but all right. So opponent's got knocked. Okay, this could be anything. I think I want that. Like, I think that's actually going to be pretty good. Well, the problem is this is only going to be really good if I find a discard spell or... If my opponent kind of like sort of starts going off and then I can hit an important piece. Mm. 
Yeah, I don't think I want it. If I had another land, I would think I'd take it. Check out their top card. Now I wish I had it. <laughs> They've got Echoing Truth on top. Wow. So I just take opt. They just have echoing truth on top, and that's it. Wow, they got two cost reducers in there. So this guy does not board normally. Oh. One time. We both have very odd hands. And his is going to beat mine faster unless I draw off like a fetch land probably next turn. If I draw a fetch land, I'm in pretty good shape. When my opponent finds a land off this, I'm in a lot of trouble though. Wow, I didn't find a land off that. Unreal. Right, touch this. Pumps Tomagoyf. We're never going to cast it. All right. Play the Brawl. Okay. It's not going to plan. We're not doing it. So now my, I'm just dead because my opponent goes like ritual, ritual, gifts. <laughs> yeah, this is this is something. This might not be MTG, but it is something. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, this is just, well, they got they they have a blue mana, right? Yeah, that's just it's just elementary for my opponent at this point. I'm not gonna make him go for it. Go through it. All right, so they kept in a lot of duders. See, I feel like I gotta board this card out if I don't have this card in, because two man to randomly discard a card isn't good enough. But what am I bringing in? I've got like I could bring in like a couple fatal pushes. Cut a land. Just kidding. The way that worked out, that's no, that's no good. Um, I think I want to keep it the same. Like, like yeah, we got screwed around a little bit there, but we hadn't cut like one of these. Because I'm really not comfortable having these in my deck without these. So maybe I can cut like one of these for a push. You can see the Twitch chat box again during live streams. Has that been not, not something that's been happening recently, Scott? Yeah, we can, ch we can chat about it. We can chat about whatever you need, sir. All right. I think I'm going to go like this. I think I'll bring in one more removal spell because of how they sideboarded and cut and a whispers. Yeah, this hand's good. Keep this. Um, probably. Oh, Nathan, I also played. I played Windswept Heat. I played uh, Polluted Delta instead of Marsh Flats because that's, what I, that's just what I had. And it's the same thing. It's a Black Fetch Land. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I, I watched his stream there. I thought he played well. Besides, I didn't really like that. But let me move down. Move this down here. Fix my camera. Yeah, Johnny, there are computer glasses. My eyes are kind of sore. I've been doing a lot of computer work lately, so my eyes are a little sore. All right, there's the Tawfaya, which if we draw a land could kill something. 
All right, so what does my opponent got here? They've got remand, opt, slight, slight, ritual gifts. So I kind of want to take remand and then thought sees next turn and take the gifts. Because I would like to land this Liliana. If I get this Liliana in play in a hand like this, I should be in pretty good shape. It could just also be what he wanted. I mean, I didn't see his sideboard plan. Like, he could have had a... Like, I didn't pay attention to it that much. He could have just had a plan, you know? And my plan does not... His plan might not have revolved around that card. I think my opponent should slide a hand. Okay. I think in the early turns, you just want to give yourself... Okay, so I think I'm going to... Th well, I actually should just traverse off of this now... And then thought sees off the swamp to give my opponent less information. Because this is a hand, my opponent's hand's really weak to Liliana because they just don't have a lot of action. They have just have like redraws, and the Liliana is going to kind of abyss these redraws. So they drew land. So we're going to get rid of gifts. Yeah, it's just, you know, I wouldn't do it, but. No, I, I play. I would rather play this deck. I've played the decks enough where I think that this deck is the. I just think this deck's the better version. Like I, I really do. Like I think a lot of people like to play their Snapcaster Mages, which is like you can do that. But I just think this deck does everything the Grixis deck does with less air in it. That's just like, after playing, I don't know, I've played probably, i played hundreds of matches with this deck. And then I've probably played, you know, upwards of 100 matches with the Grixis deck. And I'm going to definitely traverse for Grim Flare next turn. And I just think this is where you want to be. This one's got Snapcast on the sideboard. Yes, it does. Yeah, I got some new Snapcaster. So I know three out of four cards my opponent has. My opponent's got a ritual here. They could be off to the races. Like, we could be looking at a lot of goblins here. Very easily. But if my opponent doesn't have a way to find goblins, then we should be good here. And that's where we want to get Grim Flare, because Grim Flare is going to like chew through the goblins much faster. I did enjoy playing, um, playing, so I played the Grixis Shadow deck with, like, 16 lands a couple days ago that had, um, that had Bobbles and Delve Creatures, and then White in the sideboard, which I was a fan of. So what do I discard? Excuse me. Uh, I probably discard my Bobble. Though... I'm not going to be able to hold up the Fatal Push, so maybe it's like... So I'm not going to Fatal Push up next turn. So I can't go Fatal Push, kill a Cost Reducer, and Traverse and play Grim Flare. So yeah, I'm just going to tick up, uh, ditch the push. Oh, they're opting. Okay, so now I'm going to bobble them before I Traverse, because it's not like they're going to go Ritual Gifts Ungiven. They're gonna, I'm assuming they're going to be drawing whatever's on top of their deck. So now I can just make a more informed decision. Manamorphos. Okay, so let's check this out. Let's see what our opponent's doing. Him would be sweet. Yeah, the guy played well. The guy played well. I think if you're going to play the four-color deck, you do need to have a like significant amount of combo hit. Because I've been playing the four-color version lately. And I think that you need a significant amount of combo hit in your sideboard. Which is rough, because this deck struggles so much against other like Lingering Souls decks. Uh, other fair decks. So I think you need a lot of, like... Because something that's weird is, like, when you don't have stubs, the burn matchup's a lot harder. And I know that a lot of people 
Yeah, so here we go. Okay. Let's cycle this first. Actually, I'm going to attack with Grim Flare. Look, see if I get a removal spell on top and then cycle into that removal spell. And then play it, play Grim Flare and tick my Liliana up. If that doesn't happen, then I'll just Edict him. If he goes Block Bolt, that's fine. We're definitely clearing this off the table this turn. We just have to figure out how we want to do it. So we're going to look for a removal spell. We didn't find it. So, but now I can go go like that. Put the death shadow underneath the thought seas. Cycle this. So you know two out of the three. Manamorphose. Or should I go up? So if I, if I take out my opponent draws, if I take up, then my opponent ditches Mountain, and they have Pyratic Ritual, and then an empty hand against, but then they can't do it. They can't even do anything. With this second Grim Flare, they can't even do anything with, like, I might as well just get rid of this so they don't chain into a bunch of crap. Because even if they hit, like, Ritual, Ritual, empty the Warrens, it doesn't matter. I mean, and also, like, Reed's a fantastic player. He's, like, a very good black-green player. Like, you give a good black-green player um, good cards to use, and, like, he's going to do well. Like, the guy's just playing, like, a very a good deck, and it's, it fits what he does, you know? You put anybody that knows what they're doing in their comfort zone, when they're that good, they'll be fine. Okay, so I don't think I want any more threats at this point. I don't think we need any more of these. I guess both of those are interaction. Oh, and go up. Yeah, I guess we'll put the Brutality. No, 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 shoot. I can't cast that. All right, well, at least it gives me something to ditch next turn. I just assumed I had a red land because I saw the basic swamp. This is zoned out. I don't think it's going to matter. Oh, God. We're all over the place. We are all over the place tonight. It's been a long day at work. I'm glad that I get to stream on these Wednesdays, though. Like, it really sucks. Like, the, one of the hard parts about my job is, like, it really, really sucks. Like, my weekday schedules are pretty difficult. And my like my Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday schedules really suck. And it's nice to have something to look forward to on those days. Storm Tron. Well, you can't like are you playing are you playing blue white or are you playing Jess guy? Because like you can't be blue white. Like if you expect a lot of blue white decks, you should not be playing this deck. Um, so this hand's three quarters of the way to delirium on one. If they give me a target, it's delirium on two. So I'll keep this. Um, I definitely think that like I think you can build the deck to be okay against Tron while Tron is not a super great matchup. Mostly Jeskai. Is it like Ben Nikolic's Jeskai deck, or is it, um, or is it like the Spell Color Jeskai deck? All right, we got ourselves a Jun Mirror. My hand is not very good in this Jun Mirror, so let's think. So, my opponent's basically got answers to, I assume that my opponent, so my opponent can't kill whatever I traverse for, as long as I get it out of, 
uh, brutality range. So the scariest card the scavenger ooze. We'll trade off discard spells, trade resources. The scavenging ooze just cleans up the clock and is going to turn my delirium off. This team or battle rage is kind of like a mulligan to six here. It's a pretty redundant hand for my opponent. But take the scavenging ooze. The spell card? Yeah, I think you can play this deck with that. Like, you got Lingering Souls, which is good after sideboard to help that match up out. You've got count. If you play the five color version, you've got counter spells. I would assume my opponent takes. They might take Traverse and then take Terminate with their take Terminate with their second one. Kind of throws them off curve. Yeah, it kind of throws them off curve a little bit, but it's probably fine. Oh, I can't cast that Grim Flare. Because it's not quite delirious. I need a bobble. All right, well, hopefully I get a target. It's not a bad draw because... Yeah, he's got the Collector Brutality. Most of the Jun decks don't play Brutality in the main deck. Ooh, we're Tarmogoyfin. His Brutality is all right. Because his Brutality means that I'll be able to um, either rage through this Tarmogoyf. Which will be good. I think I'm gonna fetch a. I'm gonna go down to 12 here, then probably fetch a basic off of this. There's no need. I'm gonna leave it untapped, but if I do need the mana, I'll probably fetch a basic. There's no need to go like really hard at this thing. You know, I'm taking the terminate. Man, we gotta not draw any more of those. And part of that, part of this is like. When you do lose to these these other black mid-range decks, you lose to them when you draw too many lands. You have to like leverage the fact that they have a higher card quality. Don't be a Liliana. Yeah, it's a Liliana. They have a much higher uh, card quality. Yeah, this game's over. They have higher card quality than you do, but they have uh, what you need to leverage is just drawing like, I don't know, like like less lands than they, they do, basically. Take the Skoif. Play this. Black and Mirrors usually feel more like, more like base and skill. There's definitely, like, there's definitely a really frustrating part about Black Green Mirrors. When you get into like, because the top decks are all so powerful. Oh god, did he rip another Tarn Wife? Oh, it's another Brutality. Okay, I'm all over the place tonight, talking to talking to the chat. But there's there's definitely like a real frustrating part. Now I can't even play my Azrin if I rip it, which would be a sick draw. Absolutely amazing. Like if I rip Hazrid, I'm just gonna cry. All right, we'll let them have that. Yeah, there's definitely like you need to leverage the early turns really well, and it's a lot of pin, a lot of pins and needles. But after that, it gets pretty frustrating. Yeah, like if you're on the draw and like you play a two drop, your opponent veils it. That's just pretty gross. So I'm gonna pass now. Bob list my opponent's upkeep. We're gonna hope to hit land hazard. This thought sees is gone. That's a bolt, so I'm at one, so now I can't fetch for my hazard. Double Death Shadow. We're just like under the boot of this Liliana, which is gonna suck. Um I guess I'll just get the Death Shadow. We should be all right after we get to bring in Lingering Souls. Once we get our Lingering Souls in, we should be in good shape. 
Is a Bob? What is this? Yeah. All right. There it is. All right. We'll concede to that because we can't beat it. All right. So in this mirror, I want this and this. I don't want rage. I'm on the fence about tar fire. Therefore, I'm on the fence about this. I like cutting a street wraith or two in this matchup. So whispers is going to be sweet if I turn to it. Also, my, I'm probably more likely to have delirium because my opponent's thought seizing me. So maybe I can go like this. Take out these six for these six. Oh, is that one? I couldn't crack my fetch land, right? Ace. Yeah, we'd be in it. We would, if, if that would have been the case, if we would have had two life, but the problem is he would have just, he'd have just taken it. But I think this is what we're going to do. We're going to try these Whispers. We get the white land in our deck. We don't have to worry about that, right, with sideboarding. So we don't board the land. That was always so embarrassing whenever I did that, whenever I boarded it. Yes, I am flipping cards. It's a bad habit of mine that I shouldn't do live stream. Yeah, that too. He's just speaking to outs we have. All right, so this hand's pretty good. We have double discard, a redraw, a haymaker, and like another discard spell that could be sweet. So let's cycle this before we fetch. We do a Tarmogoyf. We're going to get Inquisition, or get over get Overgrown Tomb and Inquisition. My opponent's hand's not very good, which is sweet. So Brutality... Fatal push, abrupt decay. So I might as well take decay because decay push trade for Tarmogoyf no matter what. I can get the other one with Thoughtseize. And if we, in um, like either, both are pretty bad against Liliana. Both are pretty bad against Liliana. So if I draw Liliana, I want this decay gone. So. Or does he? <laughs> you never know. Opponent might be that. That passionate about their Liliana. Come on. It's the opposite. What we were looking for. We can afford to miss a land drop in this matchup. We can't afford to get Fulminator Mage. So we're going to take that out of there. Because this matchup will tend to go a little longer. As long as my opponent doesn't rip like a Tarmogoyf here or Bob. Bob would be, Bob would be bad. Bob would be pretty game-breaking. Don't play Bob. They're just going to brutality me. Just brutality me. Come on. Don't play Bob. He's nugging me too? That seems aggressive. I mean, maybe my opponent has a hazard of their own that they're working towards. The cost of doing business. We we'll probably have one more turn as long as my opponent doesn't have a play here. This is a Bob. Yeah, see, now I have to draw a removal spell more. I have to draw like Fatal Push over land at this point. Well, we've missed for a while. At least we hit on that. And now we have Delirium, so now this gets me any land that I want, a Traverse does. We get a land, we're in it. This Liliana. As long as it's not Last Hope. If this is Liliana of the Veil, we're okay. So I'm actually going to ditch these Lingering Souls. Because it's going to allow me to get on the board and pressure this. Opponent's last card's Fatal Push. 
All right, we're in business. Now they can clean deal with my lingering souls and then hit my Tarmog Life, which is kind of rough over the span of two turns, but it's going to give us a chance here. Oh, it's discarding. So probably... I'm probably just going to ditch Ranger because there's a chance that Hazret's okay. Because like if I can get to Hazret, then it's going to come down with haste. Okay. So the real question is, what does that get? That probably just goes and gets either a... So if it gets a land, then I ditch my Liliana... Hope to draw land to get Hazret in play. Because I'm assuming they go up. But if they if I ditch my own Liliana, it feels kind of mopey if they play a creature. Well, first thing we should do, we're definitely attacking this. I'm either getting a land or a death shadow. And I kind of want to get a death shadow. Or I kind of want to just play this Tarmogoyf because this matchup is all resources. And I don't want to turn this into a land and then like brick out on lands for a little while. So I'm just going to cast Tarmogoyf because my opponent knows about it. And then if they tick up, I'll just ditch my Hazret. Fortunately, the four drops are not going to get there. I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win this game. I could have traversed for a land and played Tarmogoyf. But we're still doing okay. So now we're good. Now we are in good shape. So we just double. We attack Liliana with both of these. We probably ditch. We tick up. Ditch our own Liliana. And we push this. And then we traverse for Death Shadow. And now my opponent's flood now. We should be in good shape now. Oh, that's sad. Because my opponent's going to... So I could just traverse for a land to have lands in place so that I can get... I can traverse for a fetch land and just play it. Because my opponent's going to take up no matter what. And if I have a fetch land in play, that means I can just cast my Lingering Souls when it comes up. Which is kind of probably like the adult thing to do, which kind of sucks. I don't want to traverse for a Street Wraith and take more damage. My Death Shadow is big enough. So I think I'm just going to... I'm going to lose it anyway, so I might as well get something out of this. That just sucks. Then I can leave this in play because so I can fetch a basic with it, or I can shock myself if I ever need my Death Shadow to be larger than a Tarmogoyf. But yeah, we should be in good shape now. And like, you know, the matchup's playing out like it does. Like, my opponent had the my opponent like couldn't punish their deck doesn't operate quick enough to punish me. Because I interact with them as well. And then, like, I don't draw the lands, I draw the spells. I can fight through this stuff better than they can because I have Lingering Souls. A Bob, Bob is how this game gets broken wide open, though. That's all right. Like, if my opponent were to Bob me at any point, that would be very bad. But now we just crack them. I probably probably fetch because then it's a three turn clock. It's just six 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 six. Because we send this here, that there. Yeah. And then 
And now we just give them one draw step. And just like, welcome to the new and improved gen deck. You know, like, it, it, it's, I'm just beating a dead horse, but like, you know, there's no reason for my opponent to play their deck if they could play this deck. Which sucks because, you know, modern's like modern changes. And, or, you know, you want to keep play your deck in modern forever. And that might not be what our opponent's looking to do. Our opponent might just be looking to play a deck that they really like and have fun. I did that for like four years. I played the Knight of the Reliquary Zoo deck for years. I'm going to grab some water while we're in between matches. All right. And the elf might come off and give this deck a shot in the arm. And it's pretty soft to a dark confidant. But we've got... What do we got? We've got... 11... Or we got 8 cards in our deck to kill Bob. And we'll have 2 draws to do it. And we'll have two redraws, four redraws. So I got, I got to keep this. We are, and our opponent's on the mulligan especially, so that's good. But we are we are very soft to a bomb. They mulled a five, geez. That sucks. Mulling a five is not, is not how you win resource-based games of Magic the Gathering. But if my opponent lands a bomb, like... That's how this matchup is going to be turned. If they if they hit, then I'm in trouble. Not a bomb. Play Goyf. Play Goyf. Yeah, now we're good. Overgrown Tomb. Play my own Goyf. And I'm, I'm playing into a Liliana, but... Lingering Souls will be able to take care of that. Tarmoy gets bolted here, but like, whatever. Then next turn, we'll just play Lingering Souls and then go Goyf Death Shadow after that. What is this? Mulminator. Okay. Bulminator Mage against the 18 land deck. This gets stomping ground now. We play another time of life. Oh, they're in a surgical? Surgical, my goif. All right. All right. This is, this is also awful. All right. I want to just, like, get on my soapbox here. Boarding in Surgical Extraction in the resource-based matchups is awful. This Surgical Extraction is good because it hits a card in my hand. Okay, so my opponent got lucky, and, like, they got they got a card. But, like, in a resource-based matchup, on a mulligan to five, my opponent would have just mulliganed again, two for one themselves, in a resource-based matchup to do that. So, like... Again, results-oriented, that was fantastic. But this is not a good play, not a good card to bring in in a resource-based matchup because they, they just, like, they just two-for-one themselves if that Tarmoyf wasn't in my hand. That Tarmoyf was in my hand, so it turned out, it worked out for them. I'm a little concerned about this Ravine. So I'm probably... So what am I doing? I'm probably just like casting lingering souls for the rest of the game. And I'll get there with this. I guess I gotta get to the point where this Death Shadow's in play. So that I have that option. Well. What? They got another one.
No. They just wrote down in another language, looks like. What I had. I mean, I'm not going to play around the second one. If he, my opponent wants to get me here, then they can do that. <coughs> okay. That's annoying, but it's still fine. We have a productive turn next turn. We attack for two. <coughs> Push that. And then... Play Death Shadow. And I think I'm going to traverse for a basic because if my opponent is playing like multiple Fulminators, we saw one in game one, we saw one now, I really don't want to get cut off of a green. And that's pretty, it's like pretty mopey to do, but it also puts us one card type away from Delirium. So if I find a Tar Fire. Find a death or find a um, street wraith or a bobble. Then next turn, my traverse is live. But I need to just worry about his damnation. I mean, Colgan's command would suck here, but if my opponent wants to, yeah, if my opponent fires up this ravine. Okay. So now we have delirium. So I probably just traverse for Tarmogoyf. As, and then look at this. I mean, we're just drawing gas. Like, you know, welcome to the 18 deck mid range, 18 land mid range deck. I could hazard it, my opponent. How do they beat hazard it? Good ranger. I probably could just play. I'm just going to get hazard it. Like, I don't think they're going to beat hazard it going long. And again, Hazret survives Damnation, which is like one of the only ways that I lose here. So my opponent like sweeps the board. <clears throat> I'll chump. My opponent fires at the ravine. I'll chump it once. There's just no need for me to lose to go down that much on life total. Like. There's Bob. We get that covered, land off the top. That's all right. Now, I'm actually just going to thought seize my opponent to guarantee that I can play Hazard and attack next turn. I'm not going to flash my Lingering Souls back as I'm going to. So one, two, three, four, five. They, they can't. So I'm going to leave one of these back. Because then this puts my opponent to 9. So then Hazret plus the 4 Lingering Souls is still lethal. Am I missing something? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They attack me here for 4. I go to 5. There's no like one card that does five damage to me. So yeah, we just take this and then we kill him. Yeah, you got it, dude. And would this hazard have been better as a death shadow? Maybe. But like it might have been, but um Excuse me. It might have been better, but that the Death Shadow at least like the Hazret shuts off outs for my opponent. Like the Hazret makes it so like damnation's not gonna get me. If my opponent runs off a bunch of removal spells, it's not gonna get me. It's just like the best way to do it. I'm actually going to go up here, so if you guys are first time here at this screen stream, please hit the follow button. Um, this stream is brought to you by Gamer Craze, which is a store in uh, upstate New York where I learned to play Magic. It's a great store. Let me shut that light off after I'm done here. If you guys need uh, Magic Online signals, you should check out Card Hoarder. Card Hoarder is the best bot chain in the business. They're cheap. Uh, they have good prices. They've got. They're great for like the community. It's just the best bot chain. Um, 
If you ever want to check out parts of the stream that you miss, you can always look at my YouTube channel, which is linked below. And if you ever want to talk magic with me, you can follow me on Twitter where I like to talk about all that stuff. So I really want to show you this cute, this cool little thing also here. My, uh, my friend won the BCW... Uh, BCW for like sign Liliana contest and he actually sent them to me because I uh, I'm a big fan of signed cards and then I gave him you know my Liliana's so I've got these sweet I'm so excited to play with these these things are so sweet so but we've been paired so let's get back into it I should shut that light off while I was down here. I would like to play first. All right, so this hand's good. We'll keep this one. Cycle on one, then pass. If we don't hit anything, probably not fetch first, just in case we're playing against burn. There's no need to give them three free life points. But I am excited about these Lilianas. They look so cool. I'm so glad my friend gave me these. You gotta love Jonathan. Okay, we got our pushes, so we'll pass. Hopefully, I want to see like turn one noble hierarch. Somebody who plays turn one noble hierarch, I will jump for joy. Oh, we're playing Tron, Grahos. Hopefully it's Eldrazi Tron. Like Eldrazi Tron we can beat. Regular Tron, this hand's not going to be. We've got some tools out of the sideboard, which will be good. We need to stop drawing these though. Love how we have we asked for like turn one um, bird. But instead, we get we get turn one expedition map. It is quite the opposite. We play a little puny Tarmaloif. Okay, we are playing Eldrazi Tron, so we got a chance. Wish I hadn't fetched. So I'm actually going to play this Goyf, play another Goyf, and then play a tap land. I don't want to get Reality Smasher next turn. And then be under like a lot of pressure, especially because I don't have a Death Shadow. And I currently don't really... I mean, my Tarmogoy is going to be three fours. I can make them four fives with this Fatal Push, even if I don't have like a, a good target, a legal target. But I'm still smaller than a Reality Smasher, so I would need something. The human's deck's very good, Ace. Like the human's deck, the human's deck is good. You got three fifty for blue white. Like that's a that's a good price. That's what they can search for, right? Yeah, we search for a temple. I'm gonna get my slippers. I have my I forgot to put my slippers on. All right, so our opponent's playing defense. All right, there he is. The man, the myth, the legend, the shadow. Yeah, I think the human's deck, especially now that it's got... um. Whatever it is in it. That's a that, that really good card. It's got, um, gosh, can't even think of it. Phantasmal Image. Phantasmal Image is a big upgrade for that deck. Like, Mayor of Avalbrook was always kind of medium. And now, like, now it's got a very good substitution. I find it really funny that, like, is it Staticaster is amazing in the mirror now because of Phantasmal Image? Map. So we need to find a way to break through. 
here. Because, like, if my opponent gets, like, like an Endbringer could be really bad for us. I mean, obviously, like, a Karn would be bad. But my opponent's kind of far off of casting Karn. That means our Death Shadow can attack. Which is nice. We are going to fetch with it. I guess we're not, actually. I'd like to be able to hit a hit a revolt creature, I guess. And then not feel so cooked to double. If my opponent, like, top decks a Reality Smasher, yeah, I think I'm just going to pass. I'm just going to take it here. I'd like to keep revolt. The odds of this Death Shadow getting the job done is not going to be super high. But if we hit something like Fatal Push into or hit like a tar fire or even if we find like a, a instant then all of a sudden our tarmogoyfs are going to be larger buried ruin return target artifact from your cards from your graveyard to your hand so this just like recurs expedition map or this just recurs whatever it is walking ballista I guess it can recur this Mind Stone over a long game. That's bad. And they've got the Buried Ruin to protect it. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, we're good. I'm not gonna play. I'm not gonna play through this buried ruin. Like that plus that. This thing is just gonna be like way too much. So here, I just want. I think I just want grudges in the veil. Um, I like to ditch a couple of my pushes. Tar fire is like okay because they bring in graveyard hate, and I kind of like having tar fire to refuel my graveyard after they knock it out. Um. I don't really mind Ranger in this matchup, to tell you the truth. Like You're just kind of going big, but I think I like Ranger more than any other of my cards. I guess the, whis I guess the Whispers are going to be overrated here because of that, so we can go something like this. I don't think the Mages are very good against Eldrazi Tron. I think that's kind of like a fundamental thing that you have to learn in this matchup, is that Eldrazi Tron is like a mid-range deck. It doesn't rely on assembling Tron like Tron does. It's just going to go like... Land, Mind Stone, Double Eldrazi Temple. Like it doesn't just blow up with Karn. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm gonna go like this. Yeah, I could. I could obviously like bring these mages in here if I had other cards to cut. But I just kind of like like all my other cards. Like the Tar Fires are somewhat egregious, but they're going to just continue. They're going to enable me to enact my game plan, which is important. This is Hazard it might be stupid. Because they're playing Dismember. So if Hazard is bad. Though I'm gonna be like overloading their dismembers anyways, and if I can get this Hazard into play, it can hold off like his big morons. I just don't really see what else I want. Yeah, I think I want it like this. If this was old Tron, OG Tron, these Fulminaries would be a slam dunk. The Inquisitions are kind of bad. Is that we're pretty cold to Chalice. Besides Ancient Grudge, we do have Tarmogoyf, but in this first this first Inquisition can hit a Expedition map, especially on the play. I do like shaving Inquisitions. I usually don't like having four, but. I think the Inquisition. I think like I think just discard spells in general. Something like that could happen. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, we want we want Homegirl. The turn two shadow. Houston, we have a shadow. We can even let an ancient like uh, whatever it is a chalice resolve here, and still be in good shape. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of this Relic. Like, Relic's just so annoying. 
And it's it just one of the ways that you lose to this deck. Like, one of the ways that it just doesn't work out, that I don't want to deal with it. Now that we've landed this Liliana, like, we're going to be able to get this Liliana down before this Thought Not Seer comes down. Hers is mine. Death Shadow. Death Shadow or Time Life. Death Shadow or Time Life. That's pretty good, too. Okay, so Drazi Temple. I think I'm just going to take Mindstone. I think I'm just going to slow him down. This Liliana has got this covered. Like, taking the Mindstone is kind of mopey, but it just is going to slow my opponent down, get them all clunked up. This Liliana is going to cover this. Like, we should be we should be pretty good as long as our opponent doesn't top deck, like, a dismember this turn because we get... We get our opponent out of... We're going to get our Death Shadow out of uh, Dismember range. We're just going to be good good for the home team. So that's what they drew. So they're going to have not Tron next turn. Gross. So six. Play another one. Then if I find a way to do damage to myself, then my opponent has to block the Death Shadows. Yeah, I'm just going to play another Death Shadow. If I could get this Liliana in play, then they take my Death Shadow, which just, like, messes my clock up. And I would rather just, like, impose... Like, because if I draw any way to deal damage to myself next turn, then my opponent has to chump one of the Death Shadows. Even if I just draw a fetch land. I'd just rather be aggressive. I'd rather, like, dictate the pace of the game here. And we even have Ancient Grudge up in case something weird happens and our opponent doesn't go for Thought Nazi here next turn. Yes, we, we knew you we knew thee well and we loved her. We loved her a lot. She she is a nice lady and I would take her out to dinner. If we draw like terminate, then we just go like terminate into fetch land. Good night, Irene. All right. At least we have to see what our opponent's top card is so that we can make it like an informed decision about what we're doing here. So we're a little worried about Sanctum. So we're so far ahead here that I think I don't think I have to attack with both Death Shadows. I think I can get away with just attacking with one Death Shadow. So that I can, if my opponent has, if my opponent's whatever, whatever, fifth card, because we're going to know four out of five is a reality smasher, then I don't just die on the spot. So I think we're just going to crack with one, hold one back as a blocker. If my opponent attacks with this, I'll probably just take it because there's no way they can get enough power on the board to kill me with a walking ballista. If they attack, then it signif signifies that they have a dis uh, dismember. And we might just hit something sweet here. We hit a fatal push. So, like, if they do get this off the battlefield, then we're in good shape. And then our opponent's Abyss next turn. There's Sanctum. God, we figured it out. We figured it out. We still got it going on. Fetch land. That's a fetch land. So now, so now we just traverse for a fetch land. We crack the fetch land, getting a basic. Again, there's no need to have us die. We know our opponent's hand. There's no need to have us die to a top deck reality smasher. 
because now my opponent has to chump block one of these. All right, there's that ranger we can cast, just like we drew it up. And that's why this is the best deck. Like, this is the best deck in the format. It might not be this iteration of Death Shadow. I guess I'm stupid. Oh, my God, I'm so stupid. See, look at this. I was just making fun of, like, that I, that I like, brained up and we had it going on when I could have just killed my opponent. Ugh. That's the best part about Death Shadow is you can win even when you're not all the way in it. We got that nace after after a while here. Took me a second. We didn't miss lethal. We just gave them another turn. Think about it like that. You know? And again, you know, so I really think that I want, the more that I think about it, the more that I want these Inquisitions because I don't want to be just cold to Chalice on one. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to just not have an out for this. I really want to just have six discard spells. Because even on the draw, I would have eight discard spells in against this deck. Because one of the ways you lose, especially without having a Rupt Decay in this list, is you just get cheesed out by a Chalice on one. I could see maybe cutting a Traverse for one of these. Because my opponent is going to have, like, again, if, if, if we had been on the play and had an Inquisition that Relic, you know. That's such poetic justice after I sit there, like, make a good play about that Reality Smasher and then just completely zone out when after we have Lethal there. We're just like, whatever, we didn't need it. Oh, I'm going to shut this hand. And I'm going to keep this hand. We'll be traversing probably for a land on turn one, just because we don't want to get got by Chalice. Yeah, so there's that stupid card. All right. <coughs> now. I guess I'll pass. There's just no need to pop this Traverse, I guess. The Chalice is going to be annoying here if my opponent shows me a Chalice. Because like, this is going to throw me off. Like I can deal with it as long as they don't go Chalice. I guess even if they go Chalice, oh, we're going to harass the opponent here a little bit. I've got more fetch lands than I have creatures, so I'll let him eat this. And get probably Overgrown Tomb. I could get Stomping Ground. Yeah, I'll get Stomping Ground. I'm not doing anything with my mana on turn one, so. Yeah, you get my Mire, dude. You got it. All right. We could get, are we going to get Karned next turn? Well, we are, we are holding a grudge for sure. Hey, Paolo, how you doing? Um, go here, play our little homie, he's just a little guy, he's a little cute Death Shadow, he's a little 1-1. One -one. God, I thought they were going to like do something on the stack to my Death Shadow. I got his whispers in the main board. I really don't know. I, like, I've only played four, I've only played two matches with it, this is my third it's kind of my friend's technology. What do we got? Show me a chalice. This looks like what this is. Okay. You got it, man. You got it, dude. Yes, I can I can see that. That's not a bad draw. So now we get the chalice they grudge this. Thought sees our opponent. See what's going on. I guess, yeah, it is somewhere in Brazil because it's winter up here. I think the Whispers... Okay, so what do we got? 
So my opponent's going to be able to start reality. This is going to be all reality smasher next turn. So how much do I care about getting reality smasher? I take five. I go to five. My opponent is like not particular. So I can deal with the walking blista. I can even deal with this worm coil engine over the set of a couple turns. I think I'm just going to smash. I think I'm just going to get rid of this matter reshaper because if the reality smasher hits me, my death shadow gets huge. Use whispers in the main deck. It might be good. I, I don't know. He cuts two inquisitions to play them, which I, I don't feel great about. So I'm kind of inclined, because like back half of this covers this. Front and back get Death Touch Life Flicker. I kind of just want to take the Reshaper. The thing is the Ballista's not going to do anything. Even if my opponent if my opponent gets an exact Tron land next turn. But if my opponent hits a Tron land next turn, then I'm in more trouble than anything. Because what is that? That means our opponent's got... My opponent hits exactly Tron... My opponent's got two, four, six, nine, so I can play Reality Smasher and a Blista for four. I kind of want to go take Reshaper, crack them for three. They crack me for five. I go to five, crack them for eight. They're at nine. The Reshaper is just like so annoying. Yeah, I'm going to take Reshaper. That might be aggressive, but I have the rest of their hand covered. Unless this is a Tron piece. If this is a Tron piece, I probably lose no matter what. But so here comes the Smasher. Now my opponent might play Smasher and play defense. which they're allowed to do. And I probably will terminate discard traverse just so that I can deal with as many cards out of my opponent as possible. All right, let's get a little information. Ulamog. Okay, so this line is pretty bad if my opponent top decked exactly Reality Smasher. But I think we're just going to hope that didn't happen. So I'm going to, before, I'm not going to do this in my main phase. I'm going to see what my top card is before I attack, before I ditch the Terminate. Because if I can get Delirium, then. I can actually kill my opponent next turn. Oh, is the bug still up? Oh, that's a really good draw. I can actually ditch that Death Shadow off of this draw now. So there's a Drawsy Temple. Two, four, so five. So they can play Ballista. They can play a big old Ballista. Yeah, so my opponent's just dead now. Because I go... I go terminate, discard my death shadow, grudge this, traverse for a fetch land, and then kill them. I actively want to discard a card. So this will be actually kind of frustrating. Yeah, it doesn't give me the option to. See, this sucks, because I want to discard this card. I want to do this because it gives me Delirium, Traverse for a land, kill them. I can't, di no, I would discard Death Shadow, which gives me Delirium. I would grudge, I would, on my turn, Traverse for a fetch land, grudge this, and then attack them for nine. 
But it literally doesn't give me the option to, which is frustrating. And then is, it, is this dead? Are you, what? Can somebody clip that so that I can at least like whine on Twitter about it? Like, what is going on here? This thing didn't even die. Well, that's frustrating. So what would I have drawn? I would have drawn a terminate, which wouldn't have done it, but like, I guess whatever. But I guess if we lose the next two rounds, then I get the lead comped, which is frustrating, but we would have won that game. Ugh. And it's not even like it was a misclick. I was like, I clicked Death Shadow, and it was like, no. So I didn't even get the option to. I get it comped either way, but if I go 5-0, I don't get it. I don't have to file, right? I can just take my wins. Or do I get it, like, if I go 4-1 and then report a bug, do they still comp it? Because that seems kind of a, uh, that seems a little shady. Really? So if I go, f if I go 4-1, if I go 4-1, they still give me my entry back? Oh, you're saying virtual win. Or can I be like, yo, Moto, I would have won this game. I deserve to go 5-0. Huh. Huh, maybe I'll file then after that. I'll keep this. We can bobble ourselves to find some information. Huh. All right. Well, I can't believe they haven't fixed that. Like, that's Reality Smasher. That's not, I mean, the Wallow Roots bug is like whatever, but Reality Smasher is like a part of many tier one, or part of at least. Uh, I wish I knew if I had to shuffle or not. I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to shuffle that away. We have two discard spells. I can take a bird, I can take something else here just in case. All right, well. Okay. So we take this, and then we take the chalice. Oh, I'm running this list. It's more aggro. Oh, is this a zoo deck? Yeah, I like, I've been meaning to get around to playing this deck. <coughs> but I don't know what versions I want to play. Like, I kind of want to play Grim Flare in this deck. Versus power plants, so that's what they drew. So I have to take the chalice. I can't really play Time Relief. I'd like to draw. I would draw a land. That sucks. Yeah, I think this deck is cool. Can I just cast my Time Relief, or is that like not an adult move to do? So I let Chalice resolve. Chalice resolves for the rest of the game. Then yeah, that sucks. That kind of blows. Being an adult, making an adult decision. Well, you already play. Don't you play Bobble and Street Wraith? Right? No, I guess you don't. Death Shadow, Street Wraith. You easily could play Bobble right Bobble in this deck, but yeah, I see what you're doing. You're the Tribal Flames. You're the five color version. It's a different deck. Okay. Versus Power Plant. All right, I'm just gonna like lose my mind if my opponent top decks a uh, a um, whatever it is. Another Tron piece. Um, so I'm gonna play Grim Flare because there's a chance. Like, I'm probably going to get a hit in with Grim Flare. And Grim Flare is not really good in this matchup, so I do want to get a shot in here to kind of sculpt my sculpt my hand a little bit. Both Din and Tarmowave die to the same thing. 
<coughs> so there's the waste. Matter reshaper. No, oh, we're gonna kill that. I'm gonna terminate this so that we can get over with Grim Flare. <coughs> Walking list, okay. Play this. Oh, this is gonna fetch Blood Crypt. Cast Tarmogoyf. <coughs> then we set the top of our deck, and where we have something that's bigger than their Reality Smasher. We just gotta hope that our opponent doesn't find the Tron piece. And they'd have to draw it, because if they'd have drawn a mat, they'd have done it last turn. Hmm. So I'm gonna take the whispers, I think. I think we're actually gonna go like this. Then put Death Shadow underneath Whispers because of this all is dust. Like we just want to find a way to interact with this all is dust. Get this out of our opponent's hand. We've already got a two-turn clock on. So the Death Shadow behind it doesn't really matter. We just have to really hope that there's no plays here. No Tron piece from our opponent. That'll be fine. Like, you'll lose small percentages, but you'll still be all right. All right, so let's go like this to see what we hit first, because depending on what we hit, it might change what we're looking for with Grim Flare. Him, you. Oh, yeah. We hit all his dust reality smasher. That's awesome. I'll have to tell Nathan about that. Remember those, remember those two sweet cards you had, sir? No more. So we 10 our opponent. Look for like team or battle rage. Tarfire does it as well. Don't play a blocker. God, him to Torax sweet. I I cashed my only legacy event I've ever played in at Star City Games because of um because of him. Like I played Bug Delver and never cast Brainstorm before in a competitive event. And just like ran it through there. This is all it is, this a dismember. Alright, um six, seven. 11, it still doesn't quite do it. So I guess there's no reason to cast this besides the fact that we make this member dead, but whatever. If my opponent's going to block with this, then we'll just let him block. And then we'll put him to one. Or put him to put him to dead next turn. They're not blocking, okay. Tarfire you. I already had Tarfire. Oh, they're the tribal. All is dust. Okay. Oh, begin sideboarding. All right. So we're going to sideboard the same way. The Whispers was certainly pretty sweet there. I think this deck has too much removal in it. Like, I'm kind of... Like, I'm flirting with the Whispers, like, I'm kind of into it, but I think that you still want the eight one-mana discard spells. Or you want, like, a second or a third Liliana in the main deck.
Go grab some more water. BRB. So you got that uh, humans deck in paper, Ace. Been a slow night tonight. No Twitch alerts. It's been a slow one. Both now. You don't know how bad I want to keep hands like this. Because this is like cycle, fetch land, traverse, but like... Or I can just like cycle, fetch land, tar fire myself. But like, we gotta just be an adult. That yeah, sounds pretty good. Both, nice. So we're gonna put that on top because it enables Death Shadow more. And it's a redraw, so it's effectively the same thing as putting it on the bottom. And we're gonna want explosive Death Shadows against this, this draw. My opponent wants to eat this, they can. You got it, sir. All right, so now we scry on ourselves. And we scry on our opponent. So we have a thought seize. Let's see what's coming on from our opponent. I don't think we're going to want that thought seize. I think now we're in the market for death shadows. Dismember. Yeah, I don't think we I don't think we're worried about that. This thought sees. Overgrown tomb. And you're playing it with like phantasmal images. We're gonna take target chalice. Opponent's got natural tron. Which is gonna be a little scary, but it's going to make the top of their deck pretty live. The Thought Seize, the Tar Fire takes care of that. Um, Matter of Shaper, which is sweet. They should definitely map, yeah. Uh, we're going to put another sorcery in the graveyard, so we'll go with that. Starfire hasn't been bad. Starfire has not been bad. Ten viewers, thanks everyone for hanging out tonight. I hope everybody's having a good rest of their night. My name is Dylan Hovey, and you've found your way out of my stream. So, thank you, and I hope everyone has a good it's having a good time. We're playing some Death Shadow. We're gonna be playing some Standard on Sunday. As soon as the uh, as soon as Card Hoarder lets us trade out, lets us rent Standard cards. It's kind of funny. I guess I could have taken Matter Reshaper and then played a six six Death Shadow, which probably was the line of play. Though with them getting Tron next turn, that opens me up to like them hitting a Ballista, and then the combination of Ballista plus whatever killing me. So I guess it's just nice to get it out. We're going to be able to go Thoughtseize and Tarfire next turn. So we're going to put our opponent on a pretty quick clock. No Karn. Matter Shaper, sure. Another Matter Shaper, sure. So I guess I'm going to attack first, because if they want to double block, I'll then tar fire and then go. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Not too much longer, Johnny, I don't think. I 
I guess we can hit. So what would their last card be? What makes sense for their last card to be? Like what is what makes sense? A lot of you do. Yeah, I've got two more matches in this league. Then I gotta talk about the deck. I'll probably be done in about an hour. Maybe less than that, maybe like 45 minutes. <clears throat> so what makes sense for them to have? Like what could that card have been? An Ulamog? Could have been an Ulamog. It could be Ballista. Yeah, I'll host, I'll host you as long as there's no card hover people on. Now I'm priced in the tar fire on one of these. Yeah, just a land. That sucks. Oh, that sucks. I probably should have just held that and like, played Tarmogoyf and just gone to one. Now I'm dead to a lot of things. They should definitely map for probably Seagate Wreckage at this point. That's where they want to be. Yeah, I should have played Goyf. It just doesn't make sense for me to thought see. The only cards they could have that they would have done anything with are... Um, what was I going to say? Would have been like Walking Ballista or Ulamog. But at least Tarmogoyf is going to be really big next turn. They were going to get a 4-5 Tarmogoyf. If I had a fetch land, a 5-6 Tarmogoyf. They cracked that land, a 5-6 Tarmogoyf. Ghost Quarter. Ooh. Well, I guess now because we played the two basics, we're good. <laughs> That's going to make Tarmogoyf a 5-6, which now means it blocks Reality Smasher, which is kind of cool. My opponent might just hit my red source because they're worried about the old TBR coming off the top. It's TBR will get you. I forgot to put the music on from earlier. So this has got to be a, C, a, set, a Seagate Wreckage, right? They haven't played a land yet. Do they have the land in hand? You know they have a mine. Another ghost corner. So they're going to try to... Well, joke's on you, my friend. We'll get this. Because they might not ghost quarter me. If they see the swamp, the, the forest, I mean. He's like, what? They don't play that many basics. All right, so again, we just, we choose to like die off with a reality smasher off the top. We know one of their cards. So I think I'm just going to attack in with this, then play another shadow, and just like hope that there's no Karn, no Reality Smasher. Because <sighs> now we just double abyss them. There's definitely like an argument to just <coughs> going double death shadow pass. To just play around more things, but we don't. That only plays around Reality Smasher, because Walking Ballista gets us. Now they have to flip. They're looking to flip uh, All His Dust, but even if they flip All His Dust, we've got a good follow up. Ratchet Bomb. Okay, that doesn't do it. it does it next turn, for sure. Plays Urza's power plant. So they still have the mine. All right. We got it. <coughs> what do you got? Woo! 
All right, we're going for the 4 1. Would be the, going for the 5 0 if we hadn't moto bugged, which is frustrating. We could have had a trophy. I'm actually like kind of, I'm going to be, so I guess like even though I get compensated back for my deck, even if like I get my $12 back, even if I cash, but I'm still like kind of frustrated about that. Like, because let's say I get my 12 back. That's the equivalent of like 14 chests. There still would have been two chests. Would have been two chests I missed out on. I think I'm going to have a good little stream tomorrow morning. I'm not going into work until probably around noon. So we're going to take the morning, wake up with some coffee, and then play some modern. I don't know if I'm going to work on this deck for my friends some more. I don't think we're allowed to um, get videos, or not get videos. I don't know if we're allowed to rent standard decks yet from Card Hoarder. But if we're allowed... Uh, if we're allowed to uh, rent standard decks, then I might play some standard tomorrow. See, I'm three and one. My opponent's zero and zero. That's frustrating. Also, yeah, I'll keep this hand. So we're gonna we're gonna fetch before we street raid because we're guaranteed to use our mana the entire time this this turn, and we don't want to draw another land. <clears throat> so this probably gets overgrown to stomping ground or like blood crypt. Well, it's a sponsored program. There, I'm sponsored by Card Hoarder, Nate, and Card Hoarder rents cards to me. I'm a part of their loaner program. All right, so what do we got? We got some hot Death Shadow Mirror. It looks like this is a pretty easy. So I'm going to take Serum Visions because it doesn't matter. My opponent's going to Inquisition one of my cards, and then I'm going to take their Death Shadow. So I might as well shut off their, their draw step. Make sure they don't dig. There's Watery Grave. <coughs> Death Shadow. Oh, no, not Death Shadow. Inquisition. I wish they had played a Death Shadow. So now they just take my Inquisition. They definitely should not take my Thought Seize. Because the two points, two life points will matter. My best draws would be like my own Death Shadow or a Tarmal Life. Traverse is okay. Because that'll probably be live later. They drew a stub, which is useless. <clears throat> so I'm going to definitely shock myself here so that if I draw a Death Shadow, I can play it. But I'm not going to get too aggressive beside that. The worst draw here, if my opponent drew a Tassiger, that would be awful. Like, Tassiger would be pretty game breaking. Because then they play Tasker. I basically got one turn to draw Liliana or Terminate, which I've got three outs. And if I don't, then all of a sudden they're... All right, that's not bad. What sucks is that it's not going to give me Delirium if it dies, but just hope it lives. Though, like, hopefully my opponent just draws, like, a bunch of stubs. Nice thing is that I can rage this in order to set the top of my library. Don't kill it. Okay, sweet. Hopefully there's no Liliana. Liliana would be really bad. There's the Swamp we knew about. A K Command. K Command actually would be bad because we would just discard our team or Battle Rage. And our... Nope. Sad. Don't play Adele, dude. 
Yeah, they're playing a Delph creature. That's that's wicked bad. Ugh. So we know their last two cards. So I actually have to team or battle rage this and then traverse for Death Shadow in order to get Delirium to hold off this Angler next turn. Because <clears throat> then this Angler cracks me for five. I go to seven. And then I get a Death Shadow that's a... Um, and then I get a Death Shadow that's like a five, a six, six after they crack me. So it does kind of suck, but and then this Whispers and Oracle will probably trade for this stub. <clears throat> Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. I'll probably lead off with the Whispers just like to basically trade Stubborn Denial with the Whispers and Oracle. Opponent gets in there. No, they don't block. They don't attack. Okay. So that's pretty good. This trades for stub, because it's going to trade for stub anyways. And then we play our own Death Shadow. Leave this swamp in hand to play around command. With this build of the deck, we've got three answers to this angler in our main deck. So we do we do have outs, and eventually our anglers will just get larger. I mean, our death shadow will get larger than this angler, especially if my opponent gets aggressive with an attack. I would love to draw like a Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf would be pretty good, just because Tarmogoyf would be looks like, I guess it wouldn't be as big as the angler. It would be the second biggest thing on the battlefield. But at least it would insulate my battlefield presence a little bit. So best draws would be probably Tarmogoyf or Liliana, Terminate, Street Wraith. Something to just keep the cards flowing and deal some damage to myself. It's actually arguable if my opponent should have fetched that, fetched for that or not, or cycled that Street Wraith. Because Street Wraith is like basically true name nemesis in this matchup. Like, you can't really kill it. You've only got you've very limited removal spells. You can't block it. Like, it's just gonna hold. It just it, it's it's really underrated in this matchup. And sometimes, oftentimes, that's a real way to win. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna hopefully cast mine next turn. Because it's very unlikely this Death Shadow goes the whole way. And if I land this Street Wraith, I should be in good shape. There's no need to get really aggressive because if I get too aggressive, all of a sudden this is a two-turn clock here. All right, we're going to take this. So this is probably not good. Okay, they play out their own duder. So I can push theirs. Or I can cycle this Street Wraith. I guess we're going to cycle Street Wraith. Puts us dead to the angler. Well, now we're in good shape. 
do this before combat, just so like if this gets countered. And then do I crack in for eight? I think I'd crack in and then no, I'm not gonna. They haven't seen a fatal. They've seen one fatal push out of 44 cards. Yeah, we're gonna attack. We're gonna go for it. <clears throat> we're gonna make the highest, the highest percentage play here. And this this leaves me vulnerable to many things, but <clears throat> this also makes my opponent have it. Flooded Strand, that's a good draw for the home team. They can't fetch with that either because they've got both of their lands out. <clears throat> so that land's basically, a t it's a tap land. It's not, it's not mana on this turn. But we're not beating anything. Like, if it's Fatal Push, then our Death Shadow dies. Um, Snapcaster gives our opponent a turn because it chumps. So we're just kind of in a bit of a holding pattern here. We're just kind of like, ball's in their court. Kill me or not. Like, whatever you do, make it quick, sir. 14 viewers. I hope everyone's having a good time. <clears throat> we're playing some modern Death Shadow here. One of my friend's lists. And I'm also admiring these beautiful Lilianas. My friend won the BCW Liliana raffle. And I got them from him because he prefers to have I, I, I prefer to have spare or uh, I prefer to have sign cards and he does not. So we worked out a deal. So all the fair stuff's coming in. We're cutting the rages, <clears throat> cutting tar fire, and then probably cutting whispers as well. I don't feel comfortable having this card in my deck if I don't have tar fire in. Yep, yeah, just got him. Yeah, you want him in a... How many people were in the raffle, Johnny? They look great. Like, they look so cool. Like... God, these things look amazing. Oh, let me go this way. You have to do it opposite when you do it on here, like... That signature is just so sweet. I love these things already. I cannot wait to sleeve these suckers up. <clears throat> yeah, this hand's good. It's not great. We don't have a threat. Our opponent mulliganed, which is gay ass. So this Verdant Catacombs finds me Godless Shrine. This hand's like pretty discard proof. I mean, I guess what do they do? They put a card on the bottom. So we need to not not draw any more lands. At least our mana's going to be online. Like this is double black. Um, double black into uh, the white also. And I'm going to lead off with a Thought Seize. Because the easiest way to lose these games here to the Brixis Death Shadow is they just like Thought Scour into a huge Delve Threat. And then they have stub up, and that's just like one of the easiest ways to lose. Oh, right, this is so hot. I love these things. Okay, so he's got white. All right. Um, so these fatal pushes are a little iron validated. We're going to take Snapcaster. Really surprised my opponent didn't shuffle on their main phase. Because <clears throat> they, they didn't want the card they kept. Like, hitting a discard spell. Like, if they do this now, they just cut themselves off, like, 50% of the draws in their deck. That Snapcast, those, those Lingering Souls are going to fuck with my Liliana pretty good. So. All right, we need to not draw any more lands.
Okay, that's all right. I mean, obviously, I would have liked to have been able to trade something <clears throat> other than would have been able to trade like if I had that in play, I wouldn't have been able to force bite. But all right, that's a good rip from the opponent. I am gonna push one of these lingering souls though. I'm gonna have to slog through these somehow. Then I'm probably well. What does my play pattern look like here? So I I push edict. They flash back, tick up. I pitch a land. They pitch a fatal push. <clears throat> Be conservative with our life total. Jeez. I really want to deal with this. I don't want to like. Because like lingering souls is just gonna be it's just super difficult to deal with. So I'm gonna go just take two points here. Edict one of these. And then we go up next turn. And then we got like fatal push. Oh, my opponent F6 through their turn. That sucks. That sucks. Ditch this. And I'm going to bobble on my opponent's turn. Bobble myself because I'm on a scribe, but there's nothing like... I'm, there's probably, like, I'm probably not going to want to hit... Like an instant speed removal spell is the only thing that's super good for me to hit and now they don't if they have a discard spell they they only see my forest I'm looking for like a hazard just something to break this lingering souls parody Lingering Souls of our own would be amazing. Traverse would be great. We don't want another bobble. So we have to I have to take I have to shock off of this. Then we're looking for Traverse, Ranger, Hazret. Anything like that would be great. Traverse, Ranger, or Hazard. Land, Tarmalife. Okay. Well, we're going to take up. We'll just continue to trade. I've still got Blood Crypt. We'll trade our land for their spells. <coughs> we're going to get at least one more. So they still have the fatal push. So they're pretty much running on empty. But then again, so are we. So we'll play this pass. All right, take it easy, Jonathan. Need to find Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls is what the doctor is ordering here. I think I fetched this tapped. We're both kind of flooding out. Well, I say that, and then my opponent... Jeez. Now, now it's like Hazard. Hazard or Bust. Hazard would be an absolutely sick draw. Because Hazard would just smoke this Liliana. And then put our opponent on a two turn clock. Wow, there's 
they're looking they're gonna get street wraith back. <coughs> that's that's a little risky because like the, your life total could matter in this matchup. It is nice that our opponents got this like lingering souls Liliana buffer here to protect their life total, but it's a tight game. You gonna cycle it? We're gonna try to hit a land here. We're gonna try to hard hard cast that street wraith. We're gonna fetch this tap because the street wraith is that much of a problem. If it's cast. Alright, we need traverse or hazard. That's not bad. We can actually harass this Liliana a little bit because of our Liliana can mess with their lingering souls. Um, hang on, so they don't cycle into a stub. Let's have them discard a card. So they had, they went, they yeah. See, they cycled into a death shadow. Gross. So now, next turn, I actually can get this Liliana off the board. It's going to take my opponent missing. I'm going to have to cash in my Liliana and then both of my spirit tokens. Then one spirit token. So it's going to be spirit token, two spirit tokens versus my opponent's first draw step, and then whatever they hit. Okay. That's acceptable. <coughs> Bottom... You're thinking on the last one. You have a bottom bottom. So now we edict the spirit and hope to God that our opponent doesn't have another spell. That's a great draw. So let's go edict. Then we attack their Liliana. And Tarmogoyf is, is just great. We're going to need a removal spell. And if they have a removal spell, we have a game. Because like they're going to get their Death Shadow back. And their Death Shadow is larger than our Tarmogoyf. Alright, now we're good. And again, we're just like, we're outdrawing our opponent. Our opponent hasn't seen Snapcaster Mages, but like that's the nature of our deck. Like, we're just that threat dense. Especially with Grim Flares and Hazrets. All right, that's, that's, the, that's the old desperation line. All right, there we go. So that, that's the 5 out. The stupid Reality Smasher bug that I'll get into. I'll get that later. So what did I like and what did I did? What did I not? The hazard, so like this deck definitely, I mean I'm I'm a stickler, but I think you need more Lilianas. I don't think I think this many removal spells is too many. So I would look I would look to fill out my, this, these are free, let's go put these in the free category, the old 52 card deck. I would be looking to fill out, um, to fill out my Liliana's, and I think you just need eight discard spells, like, I get what Nathan's trying to do, but I like, I like eight discard spells in this deck no matter what, but you can still play the Whispers. You might have to ditch, like, like you could easily go cut two of these, turn these into Inquisitions, and then make, like, keep your Whisper and then play another Liliana, or just play two Whispers and play one Liliana, maybe make this a Liliana. But I really like Hazard. I want to find a place 
to put this hazret where it's effective. <clears throat> and then the sideboard, the sideboard felt good. It felt like I love Collective Brutality in this deck. But Fulminator Mage didn't play anything where that's good. The Surgicals didn't come up. And you can even free up a sideboard slot by moving this over to the main deck. So I think I like it. I think this deck has legs. I'm going to be interested in moving this forward. But that is it for me tonight. Thank you very much. If you guys appreciated the stream, please hit the follow button. If you want to check out any part of my YouTube of my uh, stream here that you missed, please go check out my YouTube video, which is linked below. So for now, we're going to send you over to Johnny's stream. And... Go check out, I think Johnny's playing, he's either playing Modern or Standard. Yeah, take it easy, Nate. Let me go home. Let me see if I can do this right. All right, everybody. Thank you very much, and have a good rest of your night.